Hi everyone, welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast. My name is Carmen. I design knitting and crochet patterns over at New Leaf Designs. You can find my website. Um, I will link it down below. And I would really appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content. And yeah, I wanted to record another podcast. It has been a while. I, I need to get back into it, but I also know that I said that for, I think, the last three or four episodes. <laughs> I'm just working on a project on a simple self-striping sock um, because I have a lot of stuff to do, so I cannot sit and do nothing. Um, you know, even though I'm recording a podcast, I'm creating content, but to me it feels like I could be doing more. Uh, yes, I have a lot of stuff going on right now. I don't know if I've worked any more on the works in progress that I was talking about last last episode. So last episode 101, um, it was kind of like a work in progress report. And I had finished a number groomy doll and I kind of I kind of don't know which works in progress. That I was working on at the time so I'll, I'll just pick that up whenever I feel like it <laughs> and talk about what's going on right now I am so first of all I'm baffled that it's March the past two months have just flown by and I think that's partly because I have two surgeries on my wisdom teeth which I really thought was going to be very simple because I never hear people talking about it uh, probably people have had wisdom teeth taken out when they were still a kid, but um, yeah, um, mine, three of mine hadn't even surfaced yet, so um, yeah. So, you know, I didn't know that it was going to be such a big deal, but each of them, so the one in, I had one in January, which wiped me out for two weeks, and I had one um, two and a half weeks ago, in February, which I still haven't really recovered from. I still wake up in the middle of the night from the pain and yeah. I don't want to talk too much about it, but it just means that January and February for me have felt just like two weeks each. <laughs> because like half of the month I, I was, you know, drugged and in pain. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just laughing it off because I don't want to wallow too much about it. Um, so it feels kind of impossible that it's March, but here we are. Uh, so this year, as you might already know, is my year of using what I have, which means I want to use as much stash yarn uh, that I have. I want to use my fabrics that I have for sewing. I just, I only started sewing like two or three years ago and I haven't bought that many fabrics to be honest. But um, I have bought a couple of nice fabrics and I would like to use them. But yeah, yarn is my priority because I have a lot of yarn. So it's my year of using what I have and my boyfriend has already joked a couple times that it's my year of destroying what I have because I've also like knocked over some glasses and bowls and yeah in that way also diminishing the number of things that I have <laughs> yeah but most yeah I've mostly not been destroying things I've mostly been making things so yeah it's been going great and if you want to participate in it, I have lots of videos on my Patreon page. Uh, so that's patreon.com slash newleafdesigns. And I have a free trial on there now. Um, so every, every new subscriber gets seven days for free. And even if you don't want to continue, you can just, you know, cancel and you won't be charged anything so you know it's a seven day free trial and um, so I think that's a really nice way of kind of like seeing what's on there because I know you know it's a subscription and even though it's only like five euro uh, I have three 
subscription levels. So there's 5 euro, 8 euro, and 10 euro. Even though it's not a lot of money, well, you know, everything is subjective. But even though it might not be a lot, um, you know, subscriptions kind of scare people. <laughs> um, even though you can, you can unsubscribe at any time. So I thought I'd offer a seven day free trial, uh, just, you know, for you to see what's on there, see if, um, if, if you like it. Uh, I have lots of master classes on there. You can knit your first sweater with me. You can learn how to knit color work with me. You can knit through a whole lace shawl with me. I have a whole uh, color work mitten full step-by-step -step knitting tutorial on there. So there is a lot. Uh, so yeah, you can just see what it's like. But, so this year, on Patreon, I'm recording a lot of videos about the year of using what I have, and we are looking at, you know, what do we have in our yarn stash? Are there any yarns that we don't want to use anymore? So, we can donate them. Uh, or, you know, maybe differently said, um, are there any yarns that other people might be happier with than you because if I ask myself is there any yarn that I don't want to knit or crochet with I'm like no I want to knit with it all but uh, if I ask myself well are there any yarns that other people might benefit from more then yes definitely um, so that has helped me already <laughs> I've given so much to the thrift store um, like at least four tote bags of yarn <laughs> and yeah I mean I mean that has kind of brightened it up lightened my the load on my shoulders but um, yeah so and after that we are looking at okay which yarns in our stash do we know what to do with and which of the yarns are kind of difficult um, so I have a whole series on difficult yarns and what to do with them. So you might have yarns that are like heavily variegated, uh, so many colors and you're like, you know, you bought them and you're like, well, you know, I could knit socks, but you know, I have so much of this and I don't want to wear it, wear it as a sweater because that would be too much color. And yeah, um, we're looking at how to make use of those yarns and, you know, yarns with weird textures and whatever. Um, so yeah, and now I am doing some stash busting projects because after you've kind of established like, okay, this is the yarn I want to keep after you've kind of identified, okay, these are difficult yarns, but now I kind of know what to do with them. Uh, then you go on to kind of group yarns together. So yarns that you could use in one big bulk project. Um, and I have just completed one of those projects, which, which I will show you. Let me just put my knitting down. So I had a lot of Lopi yarn. I had Let Lopi, Alafoss Lopi, and the Alafoss is just, it's thicker than the Let Lopi. Uh, and Lopi yarns are always kind of a bit scratchy. No, they're very scratchy actually. <laughs> uh, so for me, I would not use them for any type of garments or shawls or whatever. Um, and I also did not intend to use them for that. I, I bought them for a punch needle. I followed a workshop by Arona from Buku uh, when I was at the Oslo Strik Festival. And, um, and yeah, it was really fun. And I bought the yarns and I had envisioned to make like beautiful <laughs> punch needle product projects with them and I have made like I have made a cushion with it that I really like I have made some pot holders but now I I just want to use them all in like one big bulk and then whenever I feel like doing a properly beautiful punch needle project again I'll look at 
which exact colors I want because I just bought yarns in bulk and yeah. So one of the projects that I've shown on Patreon is this needle punch rug. So I've just used basically all of the colors that I had um, and just did squares or yeah rectangles but I think it's really really fun. I have some narrower rectangles on the sides and yeah so and the backing fabric is just it's kind of like a herringbone but you can't really see it but you know it's it doesn't need to be visible it's just a rug uh, I still need to finish this side this is still open oh, the fuss is getting to my nose <laughs> um, yeah so if you want to know more about this project I have a whole video about it on Patreon, like the whole uh, process and what I did to fix some mistakes and what I did to make it even prettier and uh, how I stowed it together and all of that stuff. And yeah. So I'm really, really happy with this. I have it in front of the TV right now. And so far, Momo has behaved. Um, she does really, really like it, but uh, she's just sitting on it and not scratching it. So, so far so good. Having said that, the, the yarns that I wanted to use up were far from used up. So, <laughs> so I have started another project with it that I will um, show first on my, on my Patreon page and then um, eventually I'll show it on YouTube here as well. Oh, and another project that I'm not sure if I've showed on here, but I have it on my lap right now. It's not completely finished, but I love it so much. Oh, I love it so much. So this is all self-striping sock yarn. It's Scapius um, Downtown. And so many gorgeous stripes. And I, I just had a lot of this. And it was making me feel a little bit overwhelmed. Um, but then when I, um, I took a machine knitting course last year, and then I just thought, okay, I know a way of using this yarn <laughs> and now I can show off all of these colors beautifully and you know not just on socks um, I mean you could use this yarn for cowls as well and uh, it would be beautiful but I I love that I can showcase all of the colors like this in a blanket and they're just they're stockinette strips so I knit all of these strips on the knitting machine and then I sewed them all together by hand with a mattress stitch I have a tutorial for the mattress stitch on this YouTube channel as well there are some ends left <laughs> uh, and yes I still have to do a border but um, one thing about me is that whenever I'm close to finishing a project, I completely abandon it and worked on something else. So that's what I did. <laughs> I mean, I can, I can use it as it is. So yeah, anywho, <laughs> I have more pressing projects at the moment anyway. I have so many secret projects that I will not be able to share for months and months and months. Um, so yes, and they are getting a bit stressful, so yeah, but I just wanted to give you an update. And yeah, so these socks, let me actually talk about them. I'm almost finished with the second sock, and then I need to do the heel, uh, because I'm doing an afterthought heel, that is my favorite heel for self-striping yarns. Um, I have a tutorial, again. <laughs> 
on this YouTube channel, and I also have a pattern for afterthought heel socks on my uh, on my website. They are called the City Stripe Socks, and I will I will link them down below if I remember. One other thing that I want to mention is this fingerless mitten that I finished very recently. I'm calling this, so I only have one so far. I, I still have to do the second one. I'm calling this my birder mitts because me and my boyfriend, we are avid birders, so uh, we spend lots of time with binoculars. And birding gets really cold <laughs> because uh, basically, you know, you have to have your hands in front of your face like this. So, you know, and there's usually a lot of wind involved uh, and we, we bird <laughs> in every season. And, but you, you still need, you still need your fingers for um, adjusting the binocular wheel. Uh, so regular gloves, I, I tend to just take them off because it gets too cumbersome. So, but then my hands get super cold. So. It kind of looks weird like this because it only shows like one finger. <laughs> um, yeah, but so I really like them and you could easily knit them until, you know, they're a bit longer and then you can close them. Um, I think I might actually do that for the second one because I'm only ever adjusting the binocular wheel with my right hand. So the left hand I can close it up, but then it won't really be logical for the knitting pattern, so I think I'm just gonna do it <laughs> this way. But yeah, the two mitts will be identical. Oh yeah, that is the thing. If you want to close it, then you have left and right mitten options, whereas if you, if you have them open, then, um, you know, when you're wearing them, you can just kind of is this making any sense? Um, so if, if this were closed, right? And it would have a seam right there. And the seam would kind of shift because your thumb is kind of in front. So it would be diagonal. So if you were to close the mitten, then you would need to do a little bit of adjusting. So I might not do that for this pattern. I have knit this with Scapius Terrazzo, which is a lovely tweedy woolly yarn. It is fully recycled. I believe that it is 70% recycled wool and 30% recycled viscose. Viscose is a kind of like wood pulp, paper pulp f fiber. Uh, so yeah, a plant-based fiber. Uh, so there's no plastic in here and both of the fibers in it are recycled. So yeah, I really, really like this yarn. Um, and you can, like, you, you really feel the warmth of the wool. I really, really like it. Um, it is not scratchy though. Um, even though, you know, I, I might have a higher resistance against scratchiness, so. Uh, this might be scratchy for some people, but I, I really, really like this yarn. Um, I actually have another swatch here as well in Terrazzo. And you can really see the Tweety flex here. Let me, let me zoom in. See that? Oh, it, it looks so beautiful. So this is just a cable pattern um, yeah that I kind of came up with I want to make this into a sweater but it'll probably be like two years before I do that so yeah this would be so beautiful as a sweater yep but yeah I have a lot of stuff going on a lot of patterns that I want to do but you know, this is also a sweater pattern that I wanted to publish, but um, it just 
hasn't happened yet um, and that is partly because I'm taking a grading course by Julie at work um, and so grading is when you calculate a garment pattern for different sizes so that is called grading and um, I kind of I had a little experience with that before I have my around the world sweater which is available for sizes 32 inch to 62 inch bust um, and that means the actual bust and then the sweater has some more positive ease um, so if I already have some experience but I kind of I feel like there's always more to learn um, and especially like because this sweater was still the pattern is still in, in the making so I thought well I could just postpone it a couple of months and really make use of what I'm learning in this course. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and also, I kind of want to fix these increase round wrinkles because, yeah, maybe they're just really noticeable because I've done them in the white yarn. And maybe if I've done them in a colored stripe, then you wouldn't really see it. So, uh, yeah, maybe, <laughs> but I don't really have the time to knit up another sample. And I, yeah, I don't want to have a tester do it because what if it doesn't work? And then the tester is disappointed and yeah. <sighs> okay. <laughs> My brain is doing overtime. So, um, yeah. I think that this was my update for you. So yeah, even though on my YouTube it looks like nothing is happening, a lot of things are happening. Um, so yeah, and I'm excited to tell you about it. Um, but yeah, for now, I am plugging away at those stash busting projects uh, that you will see on my Patreon. Uh, be sure to also follow me on Instagram, uh, subscribe to my newsletter, um, because I noticed that, you know, there isn't really a lot of overlap between people that follow me on YouTube, people that are following me on Instagram, and my newsletter. So, um, you know, because I'm not able to update my YouTube quite as often, uh, you might like to subscribe to other channels of mine. Um, so, yeah, I hope you are doing well. And I hope you are having fun knitting or crocheting or crafting in any other way. And I do hope to see you soon. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, perhaps enjoy my content on some of my other channels or maybe some older content on my YouTube channel. Um, yeah, um, it's always very, very much appreciated when you like or comment on something. So yeah, thank you all very, very much. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.